Hello Megar and welcome to my tech fan. Creality sent me a sonic pad for the testing. This is 3D printing pad which we can connect to the printer and with this we can get um, higher speeds with the better quality. Now this is uh, clipper based and biggest advantage of the clipper is that input shaping we can measure the acceleration and with this we can use bigger speeds and accelerations and thanks to the resonance compensation we can do it without losing the quality. The method works by creating a command signal that cancels its own vibrations and uh, avoiding the resonance. And here you can see a few examples how can this input shaping improve our print quality. So on these pictures you can see an object with a lot of rigging and ghosting and also you can see it uh, with a much nicer printing. Of course don't forget the clipper has other advantages too, but my approach is very simple so I think these are two most important things, speed and the quality of the printing. Now it's clipper based and I read a lot of experts that complain that it is too close, but uh, it is uh, pre-configurated for the most of the Creality printers, so it is great for the beginners if you will use it with the Creality printer. And I was thinking I had three options uh, with the art printer to use it. One of the options was the NDS3 V2 My at Home, uh, where I upgraded to linear rails, because I believe that the linear rails uh, are more rigid compared to the rubber wheels. Unfortunately, I didn't get this earlier, so it would be good if I could measure it uh, before and after this installation. The second option was the Ender 7. If you're not familiar, that's uh, Creality's Core X5 printer with uh, great possibilities, but it is not finished completely. Great possibilities. It has two times bigger stepper motors on XY motion compared to the Voron, for example, and instead of six, it used uh, 10 mm uh, wide timing belts. But unfortunately, the electronic is not too good for that, so for there, I believe that a Sonic Pad could help uh, a lot. But in a Facebook group, I asked uh, about that opinion, and they told me, yes, uh, but I need a sear touch, a pay sheet, a better hot end, and okay, they told me not to use it with uh, the 7. Okay, they convinced me, and actually, the printer I will use is the Ender 5 S1, it's this one here. And I'm currently in my workplace because I presented this printer to my students and uh, I will do some test printings as it is now stock to the printer and then I will install the sonic pad and then I will repeat the same printings and then we will compare the printing speeds and the quality. I will see if I can finish this on my workplace because here unfortunately I cannot connect it to the network but uh, if necessary then I will bring it back to home but unfortunately then I have to come back with it because uh, I have some classes next week. For all printings I will use the Polythera PLA by Polymaker and for the stock and the 5S1 I will use let's say the blue color and then after the upgrade with the Sonic Pad I will use the brown version. I know color may have effect but uh, usually that's only for the mechanical strength but the difference is minimal. Uh, here I want to compare the printing speeds and the quality and I believe that it is independent from the color. I'm inserting the filament, the polythera in the blue color. And for all printings I will use the standard quality 0.2 mm layer height. And I'm starting with the Benchy. And I will measure the times when the real printing starts, so I don't want to include the bad heating times and uh, similar. And all this you can see in real time speed, I don't want to speed it up. After 41 minutes. And finishing of the Benchy, 48 minutes and 45 seconds. Of course it's a little bit different on the printer because it includes the heating time. Sticks good, but when it cools down it's easy to remove it. And then I can see that ringing and ghosting, and uh, this will be a good example if it really works, this input shaping. The next printing was this uh, Creality Rabbit, but I scaled it up 200%. And again this is everything in real time speed. After approximately one hour of printing. and finishing the printing and the printing time 1 hour and 33 minutes and actually the quality looks good I cannot see any problems with this maybe here next to the left ear but uh, it's okay maybe it's part of the design the next printing is the calibration cube 
And I can see a lot of shaking, even on the filament holder. This is again real time speed, approximately after 10 minutes maybe. And 40 minutes 38 seconds is the printing time. And here again we can see a lot of ringing along the X and along the Y axis too. My next printing will be some kind of input shaping test. I have this object and I want to increase the speed every 10 mm. The difference is 50 mm per second. And then 200, 300 and 400 percent. This means 200 mm per second at the end. And I'm starting with the printing here. Mm, this is only the second layer. And now I will show you here the full loop of 50 mm per second speed. This is at 100 mm per second. 150 mm per second. And 200 mm per second. Everything in real time speed. Let's analyze this a little bit. So this is the x-axis and these are the speeds in millimeters per minute. And a very interesting thing we can see here on the lower speed, I can see a lot of ghosting here. And this is typical example when the frequency is very near that resonance. And going above, this is a little bit better. Uh, but again, we have a little bit uh, uglier finishing here. Let's see the y-axis. Well, it's a little bit different, so the resonance I can see here on the 100 mm per minute, but also I can see quite ugly finishing here on the top on higher speeds. So this is the x-axis from the inside. And this is the y-axis. It's time to unbox it. I'm attaching here the EU plug, which I will use. This was content of the package. This is the main unit. Micro USB cable, power adapter, and this is the accelerometer. User manual and USB drive with some adapters. Output of this power adapter is 12 volts and 3 amperes, and we have different plugs too. This printer is equipped with USB Type-C plugs, so I have to use this adapter. I'm connecting the cables and turning it on. And after the booting it will ask for the language and then we have to accept the terms and the conditions and select the time zone. And a few other questions we will get here and then selecting the printer type. S1 is not in the list. Let's try to update the system. I copied the firmware files on this USB drive. It recognizes it and uh, asks if I want to install, yes. And then 5S1. It asks for the card reader with SD card inserted and properly it will prepare a firmware for the CD printer. It's this one, but I want to unplug this. Okay, the right it's written. Oh, now I notice that it asks for the connecting to the USB 1 port. Connected successful, yes. Now it will do some kind of self-test. This self-test is basically checking the hot end and power cooling fans. Now I have to set the Z offset. Next step is this assisted manual bed leveling. And auto leveling will do the job. We will see at the end uh, the offset mesh, is it really leveled or not? The offset mesh, not perfect, but it will do the job. Next step. Now let's measure the resonance with this accelerometer. Now for this actually I printed this uh, bracket uh, but somehow I'm not too happy with it. I don't have these small washers so I created one from the aluminum. A little bit overkill but at least it is more rigid than this plastic. I'm installing the bracket to the extruder with two bolts. 
and then connecting the cable to the main unit. Configure other settings. Advanced options. Measuring resonances. Similar to NDFI. Okay. I'm not sure is it visible on the camera too, but it's doing some vibrations and uh, recording the acceleration. It's starting with the lowest frequency in the y direction now. Well, the whole desk is <laughs> vibrating. So it is changing the frequency and measure the resonance with this accelerometer and then it will be able to compensate it during the printing. And after a couple of minutes the test has been completed and the shape recalibrate has been uh, completed and the status is normal. And I can disconnect the sensor now and it's ready for printing. And it is time to change the filament. I will start with printing the calibration cube and for this I will try to use the same G-code. The printing is on 15 millimeters. Of course, using the same G code, we result uh, similar times because uh, only the acceleration is different, I think, because the speed is part of the G code. But let's compare the quality. And here they are side by side. And if I take a closer look, uh, maybe I can see a little bit bigger difference here on the edge and the brown version is uh, just a little bit better. This is the Y direction and again I would say that the brown cube is a little bit nicer and these are the other two sides. So yes, the difference is here, not too big but uh, noticeable. And now reprinting the benchy using the same G-code. And this is another big advantage of the clipper, we have a lot of possibilities to adjust the printing. Setting the Z offset, the speed, flow rate, temperature, fan speeds, even the moving parameters, we can change here the acceleration and the velocity. But for the first look, the printing speed is very similar, of course it is, because I'm using the same G-code, only the acceleration is uh, different and uh, Benchy is small objects with a lot of accelerations and I believe that here also we will have a little bit smaller printing time. Forty-five minutes, thirty-eight seconds, and this is six percent faster than with the stock printer. And now two benches side by side. And yes, uh, typical. This is the ghosting which uh, we can notice here, and it is reduced on this brown version. And uh, here it is even bigger. Of course, presented in the brown version too, but I think the uh, brown bench is better printed with the Sonic Pad. Now, so far I used the same G-codes, but now I want to prepare a new one with the fast PLA profile which I prepared from the Creality website. Only I changed here the layer height to 0.2 mm and the infill because I want to have the same settings like with the previous printing. And these are again real-time uh, footages. And the printing time is 1 hour and uh, 19 minutes. Hmm, approximately almost 15 minutes faster. Only now I notice that this profile by default don't have a skirt around the object. And two rabbits and don't forget the brown version was printed 14 minutes faster. And the first look, well I'm seeing some kind of lines here, I'm not sure what are they. But otherwise from the ghosting and ringing aspect they look very similar. And again, these footages are at real time speed. This is on 50 millimeters per second. And I will show you one full loop. This is now on 100 millimeters per second speed, 150 millimeters per second, and 200. 
Well, this is that speed test and uh, in X direction, I would say that, uh, yes, the quality is a little bit better on the brown version and it is noticeable, but I already checked in the Y direction, they look very similar. I wouldn't say that the brown is better in this case. I would say they were equal, let's say, in both cases. I asked them from the inside. This is the X direction and in Y direction. Well, yes, this is the brown is better in this case. And now my final thoughts. Well, even if I use the same G codes, I could get a slightly shorter printing times with a little bit improved uh, print quality. First, I thought that this is only because of the bigger acceleration, but somebody in Facebook group uh, wrote me that there are some other reasons too. You can see it here. Uh, anyway, the significant uh, time reduction I could get when I started to using uh, Creality's fast PLA profile. Let's say with the same quality in my case. Of course, don't forget the Ender 5 S1 is uh, by default quite fast printer, so I believe that bigger improvement we can get with some older versions like maybe Ender 3 V2 or similar. Of course, Clipper has other advantages too and I can hardly wait uh, when I get back this printer in two weeks. Then I can connect it to the network, I can plug the camera. We have big great uh, screen with a lot of uh, adjusting possibilities during the printing. And uh, of course, there are a few things which I didn't like uh, here. For example, about that input shaping. There are absolutely no feedbacks about uh, the final result. So I have no idea, is it a good result or not? Or, or maybe I should get more rigid desk or I couldn't even notice if the bolt of the bracket would be loose because there are no numerical feedbacks from that input shaping. Another thing which I didn't like now, the footprint of this printer is bigger because this uh, tablet needs a space. I saw there are some solutions where they're using some kind of holders and I, they, it can be mounted to the printer itself. Uh, another thing about these cables, now they are stick out from the printer on both sides, especially with this extender. Of course, solution for this would be uh, buying a USB cable with, you know, in 90 degree angle at the end. But I'm not sure if uh, I will leave this Sonic Pad with this printer here. Uh, probably when it gets back uh, to my home, I will try it with my NS3 V2 where uh, I have upgraded it to, to the linear rails. And I'm curious how will it perform there. I'm sure that a lot of you have more experience with this uh, Sonic Pad. You can write me for your suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.